Okay, we're in uh, La Jolla Wait, who Valley. You you gotta say who you are first. I'm Jerry Mitchum with the uh, uh, Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council. There you go. We're in La Jolla Valley at the uh, walk-in campground. Uh, just a little history behind the campground. Uh, the campground been here probably since uh, the 70s. In the early 60s, there was a plan to uh, develop this area with some housing, and I've heard one story of an amusement park going in here. Uh, but the public uh, was aroused over that and uh, protested it, and that development eventually uh, died and was never done. And the land, I think, actually went to a uh, water conservancy uh, organization and later was transferred to the state parks. Uh, but what, some of the remnants of uh, that development, the, the developers had already started putting in uh, water lines and utilities for this area. So, uh, out of sight from where we are now, there's a water tank up on the ridge. Up, right up there. You can just barely see the top of it sticking up. There's a water line that comes from Sycamore Canyon up to that water tank. Which Sycamore Canyon's over there? Yep, uh, over here. And there's a, uh, coming up the road, there's a lift station halfway up the road to, to get the water up to that water tank. Uh, the developers put that in. And then the state parks, when they put the campground in, put in pipelines down here. So at one time we had uh, running water at all the campsites. We had flush toilets down here. It's, it's crazy to think, flush toilets out here, that's awesome. Yep. But it was lost many years ago in a fire. Uh, also, some uh, they had, still had water here for a good while. Uh, but then in one of the heavy rain years, uh, the pipeline down in Wood Canyon uh, washed out below the lift station. Uh, I was told that at one time uh, state parks did replace it, uh, but then the next year it washed out again, so they didn't replace it. So the uh, lift station has been sitting idle for over 30 years. Also there's a problem with power lines to the uh, lift station, and since that's the only uh, electrical power user on, on that power line, Edison uh, will not replace the uh, power lines. And now the power line, which the power lines are underground and they're broken someplace, nobody knows exactly where, but Edison will not make the investment to restore the power lines. So even if we restore the pipes and all that stuff, we still would not have a way of getting the lift station operating to get the water up here. So we don't have any water up here. But it's still a beautiful campground. Uh, awesome campground. Gr large group campgrounds too. You can have a lot of people up here. Two, two group campground sites and eight uh, individual campsites. Uh, we don't have uh, water up here. There's no uh, flushing toilets, but there is a uh, composting pit toilet. Here. And, you, and you said that a lot of the, the access issues here were one of the things, and, and across the Santa Monica's were one of the, the births of the Santa Monica Trails Council itself, right? People wanting to maintain access to places that that uh, many, they historically many, had hiked to. Uh, and... Many years ago, uh, uh, the mountains were still being homesteaded uh, up until sometime in the 40s. Uh, so people were homesteading 160 acre particle uh, parcels, uh, and the uh, the deal was at the time, uh, if you uh, lived on the land for a certain period of time and uh, accomplished certain improvements to the land, then you could eventually get title to the property. Uh, a lot of people I don't think ever got to that point because you can imagine that trying to live off the land here in the Santa Monica Mountains is very <laughs> difficult because you have very little water uh, and the, the terrain is very rough so it's hard to do any farming. Some ranching was accomplished but water is still the number one problem. But as time went by, uh, we had fires come through the mountains, burn a lot of people out. They were not able to uh, uh, rebuild, uh, so a lot of the properties uh, began to break up. Uh, owners were breaking the parcels up, subdividing and selling them in smaller parcels to different people. At the time we had large parcels, uh, you know, they were a lot of equestrians, farmers, ranchers. They didn't mind sharing trails between all the property owners, so they would have trails running through the mountains across private property that all the people living in the mountains shared. Uh, but as those parcels were broken up, subdivided, uh, and you had new owners coming in, which were not basically country people, they were city people that came in to build Mac mansions and that type of thing. Uh, and they, when they had a maybe a 40 acre parcel or 10 acre parcel, they were not quite as friendly towards people crossing <laughs> their, uh, their land on a trail. So uh, the problem arose of property owners starting to close off the trails. 
So back in the 80s, uh, in LA County uh, anyway, and I'm not sure exactly how they did it in Ventura County, but there was a uh, program put into effect, the county did, to lay out some maps which would identify trails that were protected and could not be closed by individual property owners. Uh, so the individual property owners uh, would have to uh, grant easements or right of ways across those trails that were defined as historic. But unfortunately, a lot of uh, trails did not get into the maps at the time they put those maps together. So that was kind of where the Trails Council came in. We realized that a lot of trails had been lost in this process. Uh, so the Trails Council started working with a lot of property owners and other people in the mountains to try to reclaim some of the trails that had been lost. Uh, and it was a pretty tedious process because to modify those uh, maps, uh, you had to go out and find people that would submit uh, affidavits that they had been using this trail for a long number of years, submit photographs and, and other testimony. And or prove that people had been using the yeah, trails. Show, yeah, to show that this was a historic trail. So after the initial maps were done, some trails were added back in, but it was a, a difficult process. Uh, but the Trails Council worked on a lot of those issues and did get a lot of trails restored. And uh, we were also very uh, successful in uh, getting rights to property for new trails. So back in the uh, uh, late 70s and the 80s uh, and into the 90s, uh, a lot of our efforts went to uh, legal uh, processes to get new trails and get rights to land for new trails. Uh, we spent a lot of time working with uh, national parks and state parks. Uh, working on the Backbone Trail. Uh, so we helped a lot with uh, getting property rights for the Backbone Trail and actually building the trail and working with the park services uh, to build and maintain that trail. And we still, uh, within our trail maintenance program, give high priority to the Backbone Trail. So we make a point of making sure that at least half of our trail maintenance efforts every year go to working on the Backbone Trail. Uh, so we work on the Backbone Trail from where we go all the way down to uh, Will Rogers uh, uh, State Park. Cool. And so, so people can help out with, if people are interested in the Trails Council, you guys have frequent uh, trail service days, often on the weekends and stuff, and people can just go. Uh, from the you guys are nonprofit of, and volunteer nonprofit. driven. And uh, from September through June, we have a, a trail maintenance project every Saturday. Uh, if you go to our website, smmtc.org. Uh, we have our schedule posted. Uh, you can go through the schedule, find what trails we're working on and who the crew leader is for every event. If you're interested in uh, coming out to uh, help us out, uh, call up the crew leader, tell him you want to come out. Make sure you get any last minute changes to the meeting times or places and make sure we have enough tools and stuff. We're always looking for more uh, volunteers. We contribute uh, four to 5,000 volunteer hours every year. Just doing trail maintenance in the Santa Monica Mountains. So it's a significant uh, contribution. And you guys sometimes help people elsewhere, like on Santa Cruz Island and things at times, occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. We uh, we do work with national parks, uh, uh, Channel Islands National Park, and we send crews out to work on the, uh, their trails a few times each year. Uh, we also have a close working relationship with the Caneo uh, Open Space Association. So every year we do two or three events with them in uh, their open space. Uh, their open space abuts the uh, National Recreation Area, so it's you know like one big continuous mm -hmm. uh, parkland, and so we, we work with them on their trails as well. Awesome, so you should come out and check out the Santa Monica Trails Council and come out to La Jolla Campground and have a great old, uh, great old time. All That's right, cool. right, thanks, Jerry. Okay, thanks.